Amen. Okay, so as I said, I, I'm sorry I missed the uh, the discussion on uh, the Lord's Prayer um, last week. Uh, I'm sure it was a it was an interesting study. Um, but we're going to be picking up with verse 14. Um, you'd finished the, the entire prayer, and let's let's read 14 and 15, uh, and then we'll start a discussion on those, and we'll see if we get beyond that or not. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, so why do you think those were the first words out of Jesus' mouth after he finished pray like this? You know, it, it, it seems interesting that, you know, he, he tells us this is how you ought to pray. And as soon as he says, amen, he starts off for if you forgive men, their trespasses. He starts. Yeah, I, I have a I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Just just potential of thought. I'm wondering if if Jesus, knowing the hearts of men would think that this might be the portion of the prayer that a typical man might most uh, easy, most readily leave out. I, I think a typical person would, would, would agree, yes, let's honor God with, uh, with the prayers, hallow his name, uh, say his will be done, pray for our daily bread and our, and our needs and for, and for forgiveness for ourselves and and uh spiritual deliverance yes and and just honoring the lord's uh, and asking for the lord's kingdom to come but the forgiveness for the others i i think typical person that might be the easiest to leave out and jesus emphasizing the importance of that and don't leave that out okay so i imagine you discussed it at least a little bit last week already uh why is why is forgiveness such an important concept for Christians to be able to wrap their heads around? Well, before, because, because God forgave us, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. He forgave us. Okay. So we've been forgiven. Um, but after all, we're not God. No. But we have Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. We're supposed to be the children of God. Right. Um, so all of a sudden, forgiveness becomes a very, very important concept in the life of a Christian. And the emphasis on it is, is really heavy. Uli? Two things come to my mind right away based on what we, we just, just said is you have to have a, a malleable spirit you know what i mean by being malleable okay uh what's another word for malleable moldable or malleable. um pliable pliable yeah. malleable because if you don't have that you will get tempted to have uh, uh that uh, what verse 14 and 15 says Today, you know, I just had an example on that. Today, you know, I play in a, in a, a, a men's league golf, okay? And I overheard the, some of these players talk about, they just went to a, a, a funeral and then they went to a mass and then they criticized the bishop, how they hate him. And uh, this guy did something, I'll never give it. And they used some expletives and cursory words. I said to myself, my goodness, you know, I was just reminded of these two verses, you know, 14 and 15. If your heart is that way, what do you expect? What do you expect? Okay. When, um, it's interesting the way that, the way that, uh, uh, verse 12, which is for, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
in, in the Amplified, it actually reads, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. So it, is, it, is it inevitable as we go through life that we are going to be wronged? Do you think? I would say yes. No. Okay. Yeah. It, it, why? Why, sh why should it seem inevitable that we will be wronged? Because we're human. Okay. We're human. But, and, and, and Tony just said, and we're living in a sinful world. We're living with a lot of other humans that if we're a Christian, the rest of the humans around about us in the world are going to be more human than we are because we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. So the idea that we're going to be wronged, that people are going to do things that are wrong to us is pretty much inevitable. Um, so we, we have an example in Christ when he was here on earth. Um, would we say, in what ways was he wrong? I have a question. Are we yeah. allowed to have, be resentful? Are we, I do resent sometimes somebody. Okay. Well, define a bad, a bad trait, trait to have, or is it? Uh, am I justified in it or, you know, because you, you brought this right up from the uh, different translation. Yeah. Being resentful. Well, being resentful, it's certainly going to not help you in your attitude. Okay. Yeah. I don't understand that. How, how, how would we define resentment? Well, my, my translation says nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that interferes with your relationship with God. Okay, yeah, that when, 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 you, when you get to uh, uh, verse 15, that's exactly, you know, where we're at. If, if we nurture hurt and anger, it's going to result in interference with our relationship with God. And, and I will get to that and see how it interferes. But when we talk about I, resentment, go ahead, Maria. Well, Bobby. Uh, this uh, Lord's Prayer can be condemnation to somebody when they invoke, says, forgive us as we forgive. They can be blessing if we forgive and can be really not. It's condemnation if we don't, because we invoke exactly words what says, forgive us as we forgive. I never have any problem with nobody. I forgive love and God take care. Okay. So getting back, getting back to the, uh, the resentment part. Um, if we're going to be wronged and we're, we're talking about resentment, how do we, how do you define resentment? If, if, if you have resentment in your heart towards somebody, what does that mean? A dislike, a personal dislike based on an experience you have, okay? Okay. It turns out to be negative for you. That's why you resent the person. Okay. I'm being, or you don't want to be around that person for a deed or whatever it is that came your way and you resented that. Okay. Well, um, one of the neat things about my... Uh... Uh, my iPad is lets me highlight any word that I want hit and say define, which is one of the reasons I like the thing. Um, when it talks about resentment, it, 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 I'm not going to read the very first word that comes up because I'm going to hit that one later. But the, the second word that comes up is indignation. Indignation. And when we use the word indignation, what word do we always usually use with it? Righteous. Righteous. Righteous indignation. So to be indignant, oh, wow, there's one I we didn't even think to look at it up that way. Can I do it this way? I can. Uh, I'm trying to do how, how, what's the difference between being indignant and being angry? Um, it's probably a very fine line, but indignation usually tends to imply 
a, a sense of being right when somebody else is wrong. Being annoyed. Okay, being being annoyed, displeasure to be uh, uh, to have displeasure, dissatisfaction, disgruntlement, um, discontentment, uh, resentfulness, uh, bad feelings or hard feelings, ill feelings, acrimony, anchor, rancor, so on and so forth. So we're we're we're, we're talking about emotions, but the seed of the emotion, especially when we talk about indignation. Um, and we throw in righteous indignation. If, if, if it's, could there be unrighteous indignation? I suppose so. But what defines righteous indignation? Basically, I'm saying it's right for me to be indignant about this. It's right for me to be upset. It's right for me to be angry about this. Yeah because I am in the right. It's righteous of me, right? It says, be angry and do not sin. Okay, so anger is something that's going to come, but it also says, be angry and sin not. So since I'm a righteous person by the righteousness of Christ, I won't even try to use my own, right? Uh, because of the Holy Spirit in me, I am going to be angry sometimes, at sin so we could say that's righteous indignation but what it's saying here is that uh we tend to look at all of our anger as being righteous we have reason for it okay but it says that in 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 verse 15 uh, but if we do not forgive others then our father in heaven won't forgive us well in the in the amplified it says if we don't forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God. How does anger and hurt interfere with our relationship with God? I thought that only interferes with our relationship with other people. But brings injustice. Okay. Uh, it can if bring you're... injustice. When there, that one, that one, uh, one word uh, that I didn't um, read in, under re uh, resentment is bitter indignation. And what is, what does the Bible talk about bitterness? Uli, you were going to say something. I didn't mean to. Well, you know, I was reminded of righteous indignation, uh, Christ use that too when he, he overthrew the the table in the temple for the money changers okay he had righteous indignation about it That's but true. i think it's a fine line to have a being you yourself having a righteous indignation and uh, then this you know where does it cross over in not being forgiving about it okay yeah yeah and and, and in the case in a case of the lord overturning the money changers tables um, it, it, um, it refers back to the uh, verse that said, uh, and the zeal of the Lord hath consumed me. Um, you know, my, somebody was once talking to my, uh, my father and my father talking about him getting very upset about uh, a, a situation or whatever. And it became very evident that he was upset. And the other brother said to him, but you have to understand at some point, if someone is is uh, <coughs> blaspheming the Lord or being uh, being uh, injurious to the Lord or His work, the zeal for God's work can get us worked up and upset as well. So we, we're going to get angry, we're going to get uh, uh, get upset, but what about bitterness? Um, if, if, you, if we look at Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, somebody might want to find that one. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. To me, bitterness is a, a product. It's a um, carrying on. Okay. 
I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it, but it comes from being angry. It, yeah. It grows into bitterness. Okay. Anger can grow into bitterness. Well, let, let's keep that in mind as, as we consider that, big, right. that the word grow, I think it, it's very matches very nicely with how, how yeah. Hebrews says it. Exactly. Uh, starting with verse 14, it, it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. So it, it kind of describes this bitterness as a as a, both a, a the root of a, a weed in some way growing up and springing up and causing causing a problem in you, and um, and thereby many be defiled. What the heart is full of, the mouth speaks. If the heart is full of, of weeds, if, the, if my garden is full of weeds. I'm going to get weeds in the garden. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if, if I pull out those weeds, I can have, I can have the vegetables that are intended. I can have growing what is supposed to grow. But if, but if those things are, are, are in there and, and interfering with the proper fruit of the spirit that that's supposed to be coming from my heart, that's going to spill over and harm others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and eventually harm ourselves. It, it, bitterness is something that ends up harming us and our relationship with God. And that's why we have to worry about it. So, and, and, you know, bitter, bitterness is, is, is a taste, right? Um, bitterness is, is literally uh, something that is, is a negative taste in your mouth for the most part. Although, I mean, I know there's some, uh, uh culinary people that you know we use bitterness in certain ways too to try to bring out something else but in in scripture it's a very negative thing and when you look there at in hebrews um i i i was going to just read verse 15 but i thought you know no we really need to read you know the portion of the scripture that precedes it because what what does 14 say again chris Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay. So peace and holiness are two things that we can find. And where can we find them? Christ. Okay. In Christ. And if it was found in Christ, how do we get it? Through the Holy Spirit. Through, right. through, through the Holy Spirit, right? So nurturing our relationship with the Holy Spirit helps us to be able to have that peace with everybody. If we're at peace with God, we should be able to be at peace with everybody. Uh, love, joy, and the third fruit of the Spirit is always peace. So if we can have the love of Christ and we can find the joy in Christ, then we can have peace with everybody as well and with ourselves and the Lord. But he says, follow after peace and righteousness. But then he also says, lest we what in 15, Chris, you read it. Lest any man fail of the grace of God. Okay. So if, if we don't follow after peace and, and, and righteousness, we can fail of the grace of God. And then a root of bitterness starts to spring up in our hearts. So, Uli? You know, in from my personal experience, bitterness only starts when you're wrongfully uh, being uh, treated or cheated or whatever. But that's when now it's up to you to be able to forgive so that you can uh, uh, overcome that and that that bitterness will not get a hold of you. Right, right. So you, you, we're, we're, that's where we're going to have to find that peace and holiness. And we're going to access that through the grace of God. So I thought grace is just an unmerited favor that's given to us that we just kind of wear as a cloak. Right? I mean, we stand, thank God we stand before the throne of God 
by the grace of his son and in, in grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. We tend to look at grace as being something that is um, unmerited favor. Well, it's unmerited favor. So it's, is it, is it a cloak that I get that I can just throw on that I don't really deserve, but I get it anyways, because I don't deserve it, but by God's unmerited favor, I have it. Can you claim it? Can we, well, we can claim it by, 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 by virtue of the fact that we, we, we claim the promise of, of his word. Yeah, we can claim it. But the Apostle Paul... We can is, claim it, but we can also grow in it. Exactly. Are we told to grow in grace? We're supposed to grow in grace. The, the Apostle Paul uses the term grace in saying that uh, we stand by grace. We stand in grace. Um, all of a sudden, it, it's not something passive. It's not something that we, we, we get to wear because Jesus lets us have it or God lets us have it. But rather, it's, it's the power of God to live that godly life. It's something that we get through the Holy Spirit that we grace is something that we should stand in. It's something that we should grow in. It's something that should be constantly being expressed through us. And it's literally a power that God gives us to live a godly life. That's where we receive that by grace. And so what, what, what Paul was saying, or whoever wrote Hebrews, but we think it probably was Paul, what, what, what the writer in Hebrews was trying to say is we don't want to fail from the grace of God, because if we do, a root of bitterness can grow up in us. And I, I love the way that he uses that term. Bitterness is something that starts off very small. It's a seed that starts growing, but once it takes root, um, it, the, the, the more it's there, the more it grows, the harder it is to get rid of. And I, you know, I, 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 every time we, I, I think about that, I think about um, the, when I used to have a big garden up in Syracuse and, and well, in Tully, but, and, and we used to have a big, big garden. I loved it. And there's this little tiny weed that grows before any other weed in the garden. I think it's called purslane or something like that. But the beautiful thing about it is if you get it right when it comes up, it's nothing to get rid of. I mean, you literally can pull this stuff up all day long because it has a little straight root that's about that long. And it, but you got to get it every day. I mean, every night I would go out into that garden and pull up that one weed and because and, it grew everywhere. If you let it go, it took over the garden. And then when you tried to pull it out, it had roots like, you know, huge. And that's the way bitterness can be in our hearts too. And so that's one of the, and, and that ends up choking out a lot of what God wants to do in our hearts because we're so consumed by our own righteous indignation, our, our, our own resentment of others, which can be totally justified. You know, when, when, when Peter, uh, Peter asked the Lord, uh, and it was, uh, I did make a note. I don't know where I put it. I had a note there. Um, yeah, in, in Matthew 18, uh, verses 21 and 22, then Peter came to, the, uh, came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Until seven times, what did Jesus say? 70 times seven. 70 times seven, Peter. And so Peter did the math and it, uh, for, what is it, 490? If I still remember my times tables. Um, at 400 and time, I'm keeping track. I'm making little hatch marks. I know every time I've had to forgive you. And by the way, does that just mean our brothers and sisters in Christ? No. No. No, it's anybody what would what would be the difference why is it so important to remember that it's everybody because of what you said. For... Oh, okay. that's okay we got a couple of uh, at the same time go ahead uh, yeah go ahead it's because of what you just said it grows in us and that's what affects our relationship with christ because it's taking our eyes off of him and we're concentrating on the the bitterness in us the resentment um, 
it, it's just a, a snowballs. Okay. Yeah. Which, which in a way, I, I like what you said, it takes our focus off of Christ. It actually is putting it on ourselves, which is where it's never supposed to be, right? Our, our focus is supposed to be on Christ, not ourselves. But the other thing, at the very beginning, we, we, we asked the question about, it, are we going to get hurt? Uh, are, are people going to wrong us? Uh, and the reality is, yes, they are. And Probably. it's going to be everybody in the world. And probably most of the people that are going to wrong us will not be believers. But it's, you know, I've, I've heard people say this. Well, it's, it's if my brother, if my brother uh, asked me for forgiveness. I, 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 we're, we're, I, I don't want to go too long here, but I, I, I remember we had this huge discussion uh, when we, when I was living in Syracuse and I was fairly newly married, even we, we were doing the camp lessons uh, for Eastern camp. And we got, you, you talk about enjoying the time that we spend here. One of the greatest times I ever spent was with five other brothers getting together to do those lessons because um, we picked over God's word and, and just had a wonderful time. And we had one brother um, I won't tell you who he is because uh, I, I know at least uh, Uli would know. Um, he always played, the, if I may use the term, the devil's advocate. And he's, and, and of all the people in the group, in some ways, I, I actually felt that he was one of the most important brothers in that group because if anybody was going to take something the wrong way or if anybody's going to see the flip side of something that you didn't want to have come up in class, that brother would bring it up as we were doing the lessons. So we talked about uh, forgiveness. And the question came up, so if my brother asks me to forgive him, if someone asks me to forgive him, I have to forgive him at least 490 times, whatever, you know, 70 times seven. What if he doesn't ask? If he doesn't ask, I'm not required to forgive, right? If someone does not ask for forgiveness, forgive. am I required to forgive anyways? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, peace is depending on the people, not that oh. other brothers. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maria first. Go ahead, Maria. And then Uli. Brother Bobby, I was with your dad, Brother Steve Lenardom, in Dushan, four of us in Australia. And they were working, they had a fight in the church between the brothers. And one brother got up and says, well, he asked me forgiveness on Wednesday. He should ask me on Sunday. <laughs> you, you can see how spiritual, how spiritual it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know some really great stories on that one. That, not that trip, but some, some forgiveness stories too. Oh, Uli? Well, uh, you know, your, your peace depends on it. Even if you don't ask me uh, to forgive, but I have to, because if I don't forgive, my peace is depending on it. You know, I'm going to be miserable, not the other person. Exactly. Exactly. We, we literally forgive others, not because we need to relieve them of the burden of guilt. We're relieving ourselves of the burden of carrying a grudge or carrying a root of bitterness or whatever might come out of it. But Brother Bobby, but some people are very sensitive. I remember Hungarian sister. I kissed uh, Sister uh, Gregorovic on two sides of face. And then I came, I just kissed one side. That's how it was handy. And she says to me, and you kissed her twice and me only once. I Sister, here come the second one. Well, and then she loved it like this. I, I I remember my dad was in was in a church once with Uncle Philip Braun, um, doing some church work. They had a disagreement in uh, amongst brethren, and uh, the one brother, the offending brother, the brother that was definitely in the wrong, uh, asked for forgiveness, and one of the other brothers in the room said, "I will forgive you." but I'm going to wait a year to see if you really mean it. And, and so at the end of the meeting, they left it at that. At the end of the meeting, um, Uncle Philip went and he was saying farewell to all the brothers and he greeted them all with a kiss. 
when he came to that brother that had made that comment, he said, brother, I would like to leave you with a holy kiss. However, I'll have to wait a year to see if you forgave your brother. Mm. And, you know, he, he just, he was a very wise uh, wow. brother. But, mm. you know, the, 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 the whole point is we, we, we're shackling ourselves with the burden of holding something against someone where Jesus actually said, just forgive. We, you know, the, the, the whole discussion that we had when we were getting ready for camp was, you know, how, how do we convince people that they have to forgive? And, and as the one brother said, well, if they don't ask, we don't have to. And, you know, I guess the reality is you could say, I suppose you don't have to, but if you don't, you're hindering your own relationship with God because you're preventing. And, and let me ask the question real quick. How, how is that going to affect our relationship with God? What are we, what are we hindering? It does. It, it, it's kind of separates. It's like you get a bad connection all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Okay. Do you, do you ever think why? Because you, you're unable to, to do that. You, you, you you're in the wrong in the first place. It, if well, it's it, how how do we find it in our hearts to be able to forgive? Through through through, through the Spirit of God, right? God, because you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit exactly. It's this. It's and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And if yes. Christ could forgive, what Christ's hanging on the cross and they're nailing him to it, and he's saying, "Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing." He always looked at, at what people were doing. And I'm not saying he didn't hold them. He, he absolved them of their responsibility. He, he didn't necessarily. But at the same time, he could look with compassion on their hearts. Say, you know, for the blindness uh, of your hearts, you're doing this. And, and he still loved them. He still loved them. And so if we're. Still, the yeah, Maria. Uh, uh, self, but to man, but uh, sometimes they don't forgive. Says God, forgive them, because they are not forgiving heart, but they expect to be forgiven. Yeah, because I said to one brother, you have to uh, forgive them, even if you know what they are doing wrong. You know. Well, it, it, as as far as as far as their their relationship with us, I can always forgive, right? What, what people do between God and them is their business. That's right. for them to make right. But in my own heart, I have to be able to love and I have to forgive. And if I don't, what I'm actually doing is I'm hindering the spirit being able to work through me. And it's, it, 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 our, our, our relationship with that person isn't really what we're all that, we, we should be all that worried about. Obviously, we're, we're, we're concerned about our relationship with everybody. But our relationship with the spirit is the most important relationship we will ever have as human beings. Until we're, until we're with God in heaven, the relationship with the spirit is what connects us to God. And so he should be the most important. And if we're doing anything that interferes with that, we're only hurting ourselves. Uli, last comment, maybe? Uh, Holy Spirit is a very quick witness in you. I uh, I heard that once many years ago mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised if I, my memory uh, serves me right. It was it was one of them, the Brown brothers. You know, they were wonderful, wonderful examples. Uh, Philip and Gaius Brown, which you remember uh, from your youth, okay? But you know, as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, in your in my life, he's a very quick witness. When we do something wrong or say something wrong, is he, it's right there. You know, can't avoid it. But that's the the presence and the love that that the wonderful thing of the Holy Spirit is a quick weakness is there. Yeah, yeah. Th thankful to remind us. We should be thankful that He's there to remind us when we're wrong and, and to give us the grace, so we don't fall short of that grace that we need all every single day. Mm -hmm. We'll find it in Him. We just have to focus on Him, and because of that, we can forgive others, so that. The Lord can also forgive us. Mm -hmm. Don't carry around 
it, Uncle Tony Betts, I think it was, that, that said the hardest thing in the world to carry is a grouch. He meant a grudge. But the reality <laughs> is it makes a grouch out of all of us and it makes it really hard to go through life that way. We're just depressing ourselves and, and burdening ourselves. We don't have to carry that. Give it to the Lord. Let him carry it. Vengeance is his. He can repay if he decides to. In the meantime, we'll forgive. Okay. Um, thank you for all your participation and, and, and for uh, uh, the contributions. Um, it, it's time for us to wrap it up. So uh, Brother Arnold had the prayer last time, so it'd be Brother Uli's turn if you would be so kind. Let's turn to the Lord again. <clears throat> Again, dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we could be together this evening and uh, have invited your presence and your Holy Spirit and was working among us this evening. And Father, we thank you for this and uh, that presence you gave us, the, the Holy Spirit. And so we entreat you that you will be with us and for those who we prayed for and for the balance of this evening and continue to bless us and that we may be a blessing to you too and to other people, Father. Again, we're so grateful for this opportunity to have this weekly Bible study. Bless everybody, be with us through the balance of the evening and protect us all from harm and evil till we meet again. Amen. 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 Okay, those of you that are going to camp, we'll keep you in prayer. Um, Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll look for you on the monitors and stuff when we are watching camp. So we can see how you're doing but uh so no bible study next week um we'll, we'll come back the following wednesday and uh brother chris can pick up with verse, uh, verse uh, 16 16 yeah okay, okay. good night everybody Thank you. god bless you all bye. bless you all bye-bye